look at this photo. What is going on here? These people, they look like they just pulled off something impossible. And look at this costume. Can you believe that this was designed 100 years ago? Look at the sleek lines and the space age angles of this dress. Can you imagine seeing this on stage in 1922? This photo of a dancer from the triadic belly still stops my heart every time I look at it. The triadic belly, which premiered in 1922, broke all the rules of dance, theater, and costume design. Before I get any further, I want to talk about this belly structure so that you can get a better idea of what it looked like. As the name suggests, the triadic belly has the number three at its core. All the costumes and choreography are built off three basic shapes. We have a very strong palette of three primary colors. We have three points on the gender spectrum. The ballet has three acts. We have solos, duets, and trios. We have 18 costumes, which is divisible by three. And while there is no plot, each act has a distinct feel. The first act was a comical burlesque, the second one was solemn and ceremonious, and the third one was a mystical fantasy set in a realm beyond space and time. The costumes were inspired by automata, prosthetic limbs, and diving uniforms. The heavy suits and masks deliberately constrained the movements of the performers. The choreography was inspired by the movements of marionettes. The original music composed by Paul Hindemith has unfortunately been lost. The number three is even embedded in the ballet's authorship. I'm just gonna move this a little. Though the ballet is frequently attributed solely to Oscar Schlemmer, pictured here in the center, he actually co-created it together with two dancers, Albert and Elsa Berger. So to understand the triadic ballet, you need to understand Bauhaus and Eurythmics. You see, in the year 1922, when the Triadic Ballet had its first full performance, Annie Lennox and Peter Murphy stepped out of a DeLorean, <laughs> grabbed a bunch of costumes and dance moves, and brought them back to their time and gave them to their good friends, David Bowie and New Order. They also made a quick pit stop last year to visit Nicki Minaj. But seriously, I'm talking about this Bauhaus and these Eurythmics. At the end of the 19th century, Eurythmics emerged as a new method for learning music. Eurythmics relied less on musical notation and more on kinesthetic learning. Music was something you felt in your body, not something you read about in a book. In 1912, Albert and Elsa Berger saw a ballet staged by Emile Jacques Delcroze, the teacher who developed the Eurythmics philosophy. They were deeply moved by what they saw and set forth in creating a radical new ballet of their own. They brought in Oscar Schlemmer, then a painter, to come up with the costumes and the design and the mood and the colors and the themes of their new ballet. He soon began dancing alongside them. And thus, the collaboration was born. Then World War I happened and it fucked everything up. <laughs> Schlemmer went off to fight, and though he stayed in touch with the burgers throughout the war, the collaboration halted. When the dust settled, Oscar Schlemmer got caught up in a brand new art movement that would greatly influence the triadic ballet. That movement was Bauhaus. Bauhaus was an actual house. It was a school, and Oscar Schlemmer would eventually teach theater there. But it was also a design philosophy. The main tenet of Bauhaus is that form must always follow function. To illustrate, Take a look at this Art Nouveau doorknob. Ornate, delicate, maybe a little impractical. Now take a look at this Bauhaus door handle. Elegant and ergonomic. Here's some Art Nouveau chairs. Here's a Bauhaus chair. Art Nouveau graphic design. Bauhaus graphic design. Bauhaus building. Bauhaus tea kettle. <laughs> at this point in the talk, you might be wondering, how does a movement as sleek, minimal, and utilitarian as the Bauhaus produce something as silly, bizarre, and frenetic as the Triadic Ballet? And the answer lies in their parties. 
For you see, whatever the Bauhaus, whatever restraint the Bauhaus exhibited in their artwork, they made up for it in their exuberant and chaotic events. There was the architecture party in which everyone dressed up as a building. There was the beard, noses, and heart party for which a dedicated costume advice center was set up, serving up homemade wigs and beards from a hairdresser salon. And then there was the metal party for which guests dressed up as can openers, egg whisks, nuts, and wing nuts, radioactive substances, bolts. Guests arrived to the party by swooping down a metal slide and the whole building was decorated in tin foil and hundreds of glittering silver spheres. Oscar Schlemmer, who came up with many of the themes for these performances, famously declared, tell me who you party and I will tell you who you are. He followed this up to say that each generation, each social class gets the party that it deserves, which I think is true. <laughs> Here he is dressed as a clown at one of these events. It was at the Bauhaus parties that he unleashed his full creativity and that informed his work on the triadic ballet. Oscar Schlemmer took over the Bauhaus Theater Workshop in 1923. In 1924, the triadic ballet had its most successful performances. It was also the last year that the Burgers would have their name on the flyer. The Burgers did not like being associated with the leftist-leaning Bauhaus for political reasons. They also felt like the time and the effort and the money that they were putting in wasn't being fully appreciated. After quitting and being persuaded to come back, once or twice, they walked out of the picture for good. Schlemmer continued iterating on the triadic ballet and other dances through sketches, writing, choreography for many more years. This is his diagram for how a dancer should move. <laughs> right? Hold on. He called this floor geometry, and in it, you can see his attempt to distill a rational framework for the intuitive art of dance. His experiments in dance were a search for recon reconciliation between two attitudes, between Dionysian intoxication and Apollonian restraint. One path to that, he thought, was to reduce or elevate, depending on how you look at it, the human condition into abstract or mathematical terms. When he talked about the dancers, he talked about the square of the rib cage, the circle of the belly, the cylinder of the neck, the triangle of the nose, and the line connecting the heart to the brain. Schlemmer elaborated on this idea in his writings. He said that man's innate sense of proportion can, when used creatively, constantly express itself in new ways that produce new phenomena. On the other hand, he said that geometry, the golden mean, and the laws of proportion are lifeless and unproductive unless they are experienced, touched, and felt. Schlemmer continued working on the triadic ballet until the Nazis came to power and branded him a degenerate artist. In fact, the Nazis even used a portrait of him in their flyer for their exhibition on degenerate art. Ostracized and disgraced, Schlemmer thought about emigrating to the US or to England, but instead stayed behind, painting camouflage on German warplanes. He died shortly thereafter. It's hard, but not that hard, for me to understand how he of all people ended up in that situation. But rather than end this talk on such a downer, I want to close it with Schlemmer's recipe for the Bauhaus Theater, written at the height of his career. The following were his ideas for how to approach theater, but I consider all of these to be like great general life advice. So as I speak these words, think about how this applies to you or your creative practice. One should be as free of preconception as possible. One should act as if the world had just been created. One should not analyze a thing to death, but rather let it unfold gradually and without interference. One should be noble, one should be simple, but not puritanical. One should rather be primitive than over elaborate or pompous. One should not be sentimental, one should be sensitive and intelligent. That says everything and nothing. One should start with one's physical state, with the fact of one's own life, when standing and walking, leaving, leaping and dancing for much later. For taking a step is a grave event, no less so than raising a hand or moving a finger. 
one should have a deep respect and deference for any action performed by the human body, especially on stage, that special realm of life as illusion, that second reality in which everything is surrounded by the nimbus of magic. Thank you. Okay, Nadia, this being your third talk, I have an important question and an invitation for you. I am very excited to offer you a, a spot in our fellowship, and I'm wondering if you too will uphold to pledge uh, to support the values of learning something weird and be an ambassador to Odd Salon. Yeah! Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, Nadia, one of us. I'm so excited. Congratulations to Nadia and to Edmund for joining the fellowship tonight. I would also like to get one more thunderous applause for all of our spectacular spectacle speakers tonight. Thank you so much for bringing these visions of history back to life. I'd also like to ex extend a thank you to our audience. You have been amazing. Thank you so much for coming out to see us. And uh, we have so many more people behind the scenes who help us out. I'd like to also thank our media team, John, who is behind the camera, being phenomenal. Thank you, John. We have two photographers on hand tonight, uh, Marcus and Alexander. Thank you for, for shooting. And also to our volunteers, Matt, Aaron, Dan, Michelle, Barbara, thank you so much for helping run everything smoothly. Thank you all. Now, we are coming to a close this evening, but don't worry, we'll be back next month with Doomed! Doom, 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 doom. Doom it, doom it, doom it. <coughs> Christian Cadigal, our uh, resident magician and ghost tour operator, will be curating this one, and it is very much open for curation. So if you have ideas for something about terrible outcomes, false starts, things that just don't go according to plan, please go online and pitch your ideas for Doomed. Also, Doomed. <laughs> Do you have the Doom song? We'll, we'll find it. In the meantime, again, please check out our membership program. It's really cool, and we do really cool things when we're not doing more cool things on stage. Uh, and also, please join our Something Weird group, so we'll continue this discussion. I will tell you more amazing hot air ballooning facts that just did not cram into my introduction today. And again, thank you so much for coming out tonight. <laughs> See you at Doomed. Oh, and could all the speakers come up to the stage? We're going to do one more group photo.